Hello everyone, Mr. Tan here. Um, I've got a video for you today which is going to be explaining uh, a bit of life and society in ancient India. One of the most important aspects of society in ancient India uh, is the caste system. The caste system is the social hierarchy in India. And the caste system is not limited to ancient India, it actually still persists into modern times as well. You don't see a lot of, for example, marriage between the different castes or people being able to move up uh, through different castes in their life. Now at the very top of the caste system in ancient India is the priests. They're at the top because they're considered to be closest to the gods. Just below the priests you have the warriors, the kings and the rulers which is known as the Kshatriyas. Then you've got the Vaisyas, which is the middle class, really, which is the traders, merchants, people who run shops and things like that. Then below that, you have the biggest aspect of the population, uh, which is called the Sudras. They're the unskilled workers, farmers, peasants, and things like that. And then just below them, or actually quite far below them, is a group called the Untouchables. And you could hear them uh, as being referred to as the pariahs, which is a word that is still used in modern day vocabulary for people who are outcasts and not really part of society at all. Now these are people who did things like clean toilets, sweep streets, and um, yeah, they couldn't even walk on the pathways, they had to walk in the gutters. Uh, uh, so they're a very strict social hierarchy there which is laid out quite cruelly in ancient I India. One thing that's very important in Indian people's daily lives is their sense of duty. And the reason why that's so important is that they believe very strongly in karma. And this is the belief that your actions have consequences not just for other people but for you and future incarnations of yourself. So the idea is that even though you can't move up in caste during your lifetime, if you stick to what you're supposed to perform your duties well, you will be reincarnated into a higher social caste in your next life. There are three particularly important pillars of Indian life. The first is the caste, which is what we just talked about. Very important that you stick to what you're supposed to do in society. And then the next one is family and then the village or the community, which is very important. The caste system is very discriminatory, as you could imagine, but it ensured order. Everyone knew what their role was within society and what they're supposed to do. In the caste, they're not equal, but they have their own leaders and the caste depend on each other. For example, if you're a ruler, you still need someone to make your clothing, for example, so even your upper classes depend on the lower classes too. A family is very important in society as well. And the ultimate goal is to have extended families living together under one roof within their community. So it means the parents, the grandparents, the children, aunties, uncles, and everyone lives together. Now usually that doesn't actually end up happening because the life expectancy in ancient times was so low. So it was very rare that people would live out of their 30s, for example. So most families didn't achieve this because of the amount of number of deaths they had in their generations. But that was the aim that they were going for. It, it may have happened a bit more in the upper classes because as in any society, the upper classes lived longer, they had better access to medicine, better food and health. Marriages were typically arranged, <clears throat> which means the parents decided who is going to marry who, um, and who would have, even when the children are quite young, they would decide who you're going to marry. And this would be based on social status. So if you became, if you came from a family of shoemakers, for example, you would probably marry someone from another family of shoemakers or something. Brides to this day uh, still pay a dowry, which is basically a payment to the groom or to the groom's family in exchange for his hand in marriage. Villages could vary in quite a big way. So you could have some tiny ones, which are just a handful of houses, or they could be a huge village, um, or even like a city with hundreds of houses and hundreds of buildings. Now, the way cities were typically laid out at the time, so in the center you had uh, your city center, your homes, shops, government buildings, and things like that. And then around the outside of the centre, you would have uh, farms. 
Villagers were typically self-sufficient, which means they made everything that the people in the village would need. They did trade certain things depending on what their specialties were, but generally all the food that the village needed was grown by the people who were in that village on their own farms. As far as the role of women in the village, men and women often worked together to govern villages. There are records from the Gupta Empire from, of women serving on town councils. But as Hinduism became more entrenched in society, in Indian society, the role of women actually became di diminished. It got smaller and men became a lot more dominant.